Welcome back to another edition of the Arkham Menard Series Preview Show. This is our first 2022 edition. I'm Casey Campbell. Of course, you know that's Arkham Menard Series PR Director Charlie Crawl. We get to do this again, Charlie, in 2022. How about that? Wait, is it, do I have to do it again? Or I, mean, I get you don't to do have to. You what's can what's the well. difference? Do I have to or do I get to? You get to and you don't. All right, I get to. Well, I tell my wife the same thing. I say, you don't have to hang out with me. You get to hang out with me. <laughs> I've hung out with both of you before. It's uh, it's it's always a fun time with it. With, uh, it? Oh yeah, it's always an adventure. Um, well, we're getting ready on another adventure of the, of another another season of Arkham Menard series racing. Uh, it starts off with the test in Daytona. Um, we I know you guys have been working hard all off season long to to get the announcements out and all that fun stuff. Uh, going to be a lot of changes, a lot of new faces in the Arkham Menard series. Uh, how excited are you guys to start the year? Uh, I am thrilled to get back to the racetrack. You know, it's we always get to that at the end of the year and everyone's always kind of run out of gas and, you know, you oh, we need a break. And I get to the end of the year and you give me a couple of weeks off and I'm ready to get back at it. You know, I'm I'm a, a racing guy. I, I would much rather be at the racetrack on the weekends than not. So the the off season is is kind of torturous for me. So I, I'm looking forward to getting down to Daytona this weekend. I'll I'll be down there to kind of help out with a few things on you know Friday and Saturday morning, and then we'll get home and watch you know the finals of the Chili Bowl Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. It's it's going to be a really fun weekend. And then you know once we get back from that test, you, you know it's or the the preseason practice is what it is. Um, once we get back from Daytona this weekend, you know, it's really full it's steam time. ahead towards that race, you know, that's coming up. We've got two races that week, actually, Casey, Yeah. you know, coming up uh, Tuesday, February 15th at New Smyrna Speedway. And then we'll follow it up with the season opener for the Arkham and Art Series at Daytona on the 19th. So it's going to be a busy, busy time for us, you know, here in the, in the Arca world. Yeah, I bet it's going to be, it's going to be super slim. So a lot of new faces and a lot of new places, of course, getting ready for the 2022 season. Um, of course, the biggest one, there's going to be more, more people going for the championship in the Arkham Menard series, more full-time drivers. We got the two Rev drivers with uh, Nick Sanchez and Raja Ruth. And actually, some news just came out about who Raja's crew chief is going to be. Yeah, pretty interesting note there, huh? Yeah, Brad Parrott will be the crew chief uh, for them a long time. Longtime motorsports fans know that that uh, he'll be on top of the box for the for the six. Yeah, so the the Parrot family has had a ton of success at Daytona over the years. You know, Buddy Parrot, you know, one has he's a Daytona 500 winner. He he won with Derek Cope yeah. at Daytona. That's how that's you know how far back he stretches. Um, and as a matter of fact, he actually crew chief for my uncle's race team back in the in the 1970s. Right. Uh, back with Daryl Waltrip, but uh, you know Todd Parrot. You know, Brad's brother, Todd, has a three-time Daytona 500 winner. Um, actually, a two-time Daytona 500 winner, I believe, with Dale Jarrett. And, and Brad has had some success there as well. So that's going to be great for Raja. Um, you know, that's, I think, when you've got young drivers, you want veteran leadership. And, and Brad has got a lot of experience. And, you know, that's one of the, the hallmarks of the Parrot family was that they were great leaders. You know, not only were they great mechanically, but they really got a lot out of their, their guys. So I expect a lot out of that team this year. Yeah. You look at GMS, of course, Daniel Dye, a lot of changes with them. Of course, uh, the number 43 is back on, uh, on Dye's car like it was uh, early on with when he was with Ben Kennedy Racing. Of course, uh, GMS and the Petty family have kind of merged their operation together and at least on the cup side but yeah well, i heard the whole the whole reason they merged was just so they could get daniel that number back <laughs> yeah um yeah daniel will be there of course amber um how do you pro, pro, balkan amber balkan amber balkan okay all right amber balkan of course for everyone that has mispronounced um her name and all that how stuff. would you have pronounced it ball clean or something i don't know stay close enough Right. Yeah. Okay. And then, yep. yeah, and then Venturini will have some, uh, there's going to be some announcements there too. So, Yeah, I don't expect that we will see a full season challenger out of the Venturini camp in 2022, but I think we will see uh, some race winners out of the Venturini camp in 2022. Maybe not a full season points contender, but they will be, week in and week out, they will be one of the cars to be. 
Yeah. And of course you look at also Connor Mozak announced, uh, was, uh, was announced by, uh, um, was announced by front stretch actually that Brett Holmes race, he'll be going to Brett Holmes racing for about 10 races, uh, of uh, this season as well. Uh, of course, uh, you know, Sam Mayer was in that car for a little bit. Brett Holmes was in there for a couple races. Uh, it's going to be a fun ride for them as well. You know, Connor is one of the protégés of Lauren Rainier and anybody who knows the Rainier family history, uh, particularly at Daytona, knows that, you know, that they've, they've had a lot of success there. Um, you know, three, three Daytona 500 victories with Buddy Baker and Kaylee Arbro and, you know, Lauren himself, uh, a, a former spotter and now kind of a driver development specialist. So he's been very high on Connor the last couple of years. So uh, again, I expect very big things out of him. Brett, we didn't see him on the racetrack, whether it was in, in the Arkham and Art series or the trucks. I don't think anybody saw them as much as we would have liked to have seen um, Brett Holmes racing, but they really have done a nice job getting that program very solidified and, and bringing some other young drivers into it. And, you know, the uh, Brett and Stacy Holmes, uh, wonderful people, and, and we're very happy uh, to have them back with us. Yep. Uh, even if it's in a part-time role, we're happy to have them back. Yeah, that's that's always good. Of course, our good friends, uh, you know, Greg Van Els joined the ser- rejoined the series last year. Uh, there's a, There's been conversation about him of whether he will go full-time. Um, there's also Andy Jane Kowiak, who, who will be who will be with us as well. And actually they're going to uh, actually Mason Maggio is going to test uh, the Andy Jankoyak car a little bit there too. Yeah. I think Andy is in a little bit different situation. I think he would like to go full time. You know, that's obviously going to be very dependent on uh, funding. I think Greg is probably a little closer on, you know, being able to make that happen at this point. But we, again, those are two guys that are exactly what the Arkham and art series is here for. Um, you know, they are just the epitome of, of hardcore racers and we're very happy to have them both. And, you know, both of them had some really great moments in 2021. You know, Greg's run at Winchester there is probably the underdog run of the year. Um, you know, just incredible for him to come out to the, a race he wasn't even really planning on running and coming home with a second place finish, just phenomenal. And, and of course, Andy, you know, kind of the, uh, you know, I call Brad Smith the ultimate underdog but uh, Andy's giving them a run for the money right there. You know, Andy yeah. does all this on, on a very shoestring budget and to come out and, and I think he ran six races or seven races and, and had five top 10 finishes. Uh, just incredible. Um, you know, just really real Testament to, you know, his hard work and his dedication to make it happen and to follow in his father's and his uncle's footsteps. You know, we're, we're so tickled to have him. And he, of course he won the, uh, the Ken Schrader Racer of the Year Award at the, at the performance racing industry trade show back in December. So, you know, it's good to see that other people are paying attention to him and, and, and noticing the hard work that he's put into it here over the last couple of years. Okay, so let's um, also, we have a couple of other faces that, you know, that we're going to kind of see. Of course, Joe Gibbs Racing will have some new faces in the 18 next year, of course, I think we all know it hasn't been announced where Ty Gibbs is going, but I think we can all figure out. Well, where, where where's Ty Gibbs going? I don't know. He might go run full time Xfinity, but um, you think he might? Yeah, but yeah I'm I'm not sure. The team hasn't I haven't heard that one. The team hasn't confirmed it yet, but it looks like uh, have they denied it. No, they have not denied it. They actually came out with a tweet and said Ty was going to come out run full time, but I still know that their lineups are still. Um, being uh, finalized as we speak. I'd actually talked to Joe Gibbs. I, I haven't heard anything about what Ty is going to do next year. You must really have. I'm not, no, I don't you. know. I, I mean, I either I'm, you know, you got to be lucky in this business though. Right. Yeah. So of course we'll see some new faces over at Joe Gibbs racing. What do you um, think we're going to see over there? Hmm. I mean, Sammy Smith and Drew Dollar are listed on the, uh, on the ARCA test. So huh. if, if, if you Those like. Those are probably two pretty solid guesses. Uh, I think he got, I think he got, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The team hasn't confirmed it yet, but I think he might got a pretty good chance if they're with the ARCA test. Similar, a lot of announcements come out during around this time, really. But um, of course we got the East and West schedule. Let's uh, let's talk about some of the changes there because uh, they're going to be on a new home um, in 2022. Yeah. We're going to move over to floor racing, which is huge. Um, I am, I have been a, a subscriber of Flow Racing now for probably four or five years. Yeah. Um, you know, just for their 
all-star circuit of champions sprint car package. And the, you know, they, they already have all of the USAC national races, whether it's silver crown uh, national sprint cars or national midgets, um, you know, and of course the chili bowl, they, they brought the chili bowl on a couple of years ago. And um, just to me, it's a complete no brainer as a race fan that you, yeah. you subscribe to, to flow racing. And, and for us to move our, uh, NASCAR roots package over there. And, and that's going, going to include, you know, the Arkham and art series, East and West, um, the MAV TV broadcasts of the Arkham and art series races, um, the, the NASCAR wheel of modified tour and, um, advanced auto parts weekly racing, um, from all around the country. So there's going to be a ton of real great NASCAR content up on flow racing. Um, you know, I know that it's a little more expensive than the previous package was, but I think what you're going to get in return is so much more, um, just as a race fan. I mean, to me as a fan, you know, I would pay $120 a year just for the chili bowl, you know, and it was worth it to me. Um, so, so to pay 150 bucks a year, get the chili bowl, get USAC, get, all-star sprints, get all of the NASCAR roots package. Um, to me, it's, it's more than worth it. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing that first, that first race at new Smyrna, uh, go live on flow sports. Cause it's, it, it's a, to me, it's a perfect fit. Yeah. I mean, I just subscribed to flow racing this year. So it's, uh, it's, it's a definitely, a, it is definitely worth it. You will, you will not regret the 150 bucks that come up. That comes out. Well, not it's it, it's a little pricey, but you know, once you get past that sticker shock, there's, I mean, throughout the course of the summer, Casey, there's probably less than a week, less than seven days that there isn't a live race right. somewhere. Yeah, you know, there's yeah. there's always a race, always there's a race to watch. There's always a race. I was watching Chili Bowl last night, and it was uh, it's pretty good. We got some good, we got some good stuff coming up tonight though, too. I am so excited. A lot of our ARCA friends are down there as well. Right. Um, you know, we got Jesse Love down there. Uh, keep, um, let, who Chase else? Briscoe. Chase Briscoe is down there. Chase Elliott is down there. Alex Chase Bowman Elliott, is down former there. ARCA winner. Former, that's how I refer to him. Former ARCA winner, Chase Elliott. <laughs> yes. Me do. And you know, Kyle Larson, of course, is down there. Another former ARCA winner, right? I mean, you know, you know the stat that all these drivers, you know, where they they all came through the Arkham Menard series. Is, uh, hey, it's almost like we build champions. Actually, you do. You know, I don't know. Yeah, if I think we do, right? Um, so obviously, you know, the E series. You know, Sammy Smith, of course, has been announced of what his plans are. So it's expected that he'll be back. Taylor Gray. Uh, it's been reported that he'll be back for DGR. Of course, he'll be running for that. What are we going to expect in the the East and West? I know the West series is, uh, came out with some announcements. Austin Herzog going to come over and run BMR full time. That's uh, going to be pretty good. Yeah, I think we'll see. I think we'll see the West continue to uh, trend upward uh, as it did last year. Yeah, you know that schedule is is pretty solid. Eleven races, uh, ten standalone races, and the one conjunction race with the Arkham and Art series there at Phoenix. Uh, I think we'll see car counts continue to grow out west, which is which is fantastic. Um, it's no secret, Casey. We've talked about this. We we really do have some work to do with the east, um, but we have we've had a lot of people inquire with us about the east series this year. So, uh, you know, it's I, it's way too early to tell exactly what that's going to lead to, but it, it's very encouraging. We're, we're we're very optimistic that we will have a a pretty solid car count there when we get down to New Smyrna and we'll see if we can carry that momentum out throughout the year. All right. Um, of course, uh, you know, a lot of entries coming into Daytona, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of guys like, you know, Luke Fenhouse and Hunter Jack and Jake Drew and Mason Diaz, of course, the four drivers uh, that, that part of the ARCA, what, what's that program the called? The Daytona program. Yeah. The Daytona program. Uh, what's that been like to partner with those four drivers? So that that's always been a big part of, you know, what, uh, you know, what we want to offer is the, the opportunity for drivers to come in and, you know, make that leap into becoming a professional race car driver in, in, in the NASCAR series. You know, that's kind of what we're here to do is, is bridge the gap between, you know, local regional racing and 
you know, NASCAR level racing. So for us to give, you know, Luke Fenhaus or, you know, even back in the day, um, you know, Ty Majeski, you know, to give them the opportunity to come out and, and run at a, a place like Daytona, you know, it does, it gives them their first look at a, a big, fast, super speedway like that. So, um, you know, it's great. It's, I know there are a lot of drivers who are out there running the, the Arca CRA super series or the Midwest tour who really do, they want to make a run at that championship so they can get this chance to come down and, and make some laps at Daytona. And, and I look for, you know, not only for that program to continue uh, in 2023, but I think we're even maybe looking at expanding that a little bit. So, yeah, it's, it's great to give those folks an opportunity to come out and, and hit the high banks down there at the World Center of Speed. Yep. I know there's also some things that you still have to straighten out. The one last thing that you kind of have to still announce is uh, the two chief showdown schedule. Yeah, I think we'll have that out here in, in the coming days. Um, yeah, there's just a couple of little uh, minor, minor details that we're going over with our friends at Sioux Chief. They are still 100% behind that program. It's just a matter of kind of selecting which races, you know, we, we'd like to bring them to. And uh, yeah, I think we'll have that out here in the, in the coming days. Could be sooner than later. All right. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this uh, this uh, week's edition of the of the ARCA preview show. We'll have, be back in a few weeks to talk new Smyrna and Daytona uh, sometime next. next uh, it'll be here before you know it. So. It'll be here before we know it, Casey. Of course. Uh, of course, uh, it's still still some things that have to be straightened out with the uh, the TV coverage and all that. But we'll uh, we'll announce that when that time comes. Looking forward to it.